so i have not taken advantage of these three minute minute videos so here we go here's a full in-depth makeup look i start off the bondi sands lip moisturizer and it is absolutely amazing makes my lips super juicy and then i go in with this revolution primer i don't actually use this that often as it is quite sticky but i thought i'd use it today and i also mixed it in with the milk makeup moisturizer i use the unicorn cosmetics eyebrow soap and i actually really liked it i've never used it before but they really kindly gifted me it so i thought i'd give it a go i do skip over the rest of my eyebrows and i use the revolution brow pencil and i also use the collection last and perfection concealer i always use that concealer is a ride or die i will be doing this eye look today and it was a lot harder than i thought but here i go i start off with my base first and i use this revolution foundation you guys would have tried this foundation already it is amazing i mean i've never tried it before until today but i loved it and i just put this all over my face no it's not my shade so please do not comment it because i know it's not my shade but i do mix it in quite well i then use the revolution cream contour palette clearly i really like revolution today but they sent me over a bunch of products and i thought i'd give some of them a go and i actually really loved the way that this cream contour sat on my face so yeah i did go in with the nars concealer i love this it is amazing i use the shade cream custard i am craving chocolate right now has anyone tried any new chocolate bars and if so what have you tried because i would love to know but yeah this is me putting on some bronzer but yeah i'm now just putting on some bronzer put it on the cheeks nose sharpen that jawline and then i always go with the laura mercier powder it's their loose setting powder this one's in the shade translucent i also love their translucent honey one however i'm not as tanned today so i'm not going to use it and i'm just using their translucent if you haven't tried this lottie london powder to be fair i normally use their warmer shade and not the translucent but i couldn't find it today then you need to try it and with this brush as well this brush is from it cosmetics it will be a life changer like honestly you can match up your foundation perfectly when you put this at the bottom of your makeup i use the milk makeup highlighter and then i just go in with this palette and dip into the black shade here i'm just doing swishy motions and i'm doing the makeup look that spencer created i think this is so gorgeous i mean it doesn't really suit me that much however it's still pretty I go in with the Unicorn Cosmetics eyelashes. These ones are so pretty. They're so fluffy and so gorgeous. And then I go in with this Desert Sun Lip Liner from Primark. I love their Primark lip liners because they're just so creamy and they're literally a pound. So you can't really go wrong, can you? I do decide to go in with a red lip today to really finish off this look, really to pop out that eye makeup that I've done. And this one is from Rimmel. It is such a gorgeous red shade. And this is my finished makeup look. I feel so gorgeous in this. And yeah, goodbye. I love you guys. Mwah. Okay, so part two. So I went and hid in the music room. That was in the PTA room, which was close by. Literally started crying because I was so scared and they weren't telling us anything because we were too young. I guess they didn't want to scare us. That didn't work. Once the code red was over, about 30 minutes later, we went to class. I went to go find my dad and make sure he was okay and see if he knew anything. And he didn't. When I got in my classroom, we were all talking about it. And my teacher said that the man just walked in and told them he was looking for one of his teachers from like 15 years back. Huh? They gave us a description of the man and I realized it was the same man from Dunkin Donuts. He just walked in my school. I was freaked out because I saw him at Dunkin Donuts before school started. And I hoped I never saw him again. But a few weeks later, I saw him again multiple times at the same Dunkin Donuts. He literally just stared at me all the time. So yeah, that's my little story. So for the first time in a really long time, I actually had something scary happen to me last night. So I was up really late because my boyfriend's in Vegas and their time difference is two hours behind. And he goes to bed really late. So for the past few days, I've been staying up till 4 a.m. until he falls asleep. So last night I decided I wanted to get some food, a late night snack. And at this point, I think it's like 2 a.m. And in my basement, I hear some rumbling and fumbling, but nobody's down there. Everybody's asleep. I don't have any pets. My dog's dead. I don't have any pets. So I'm in the kitchen listening. And my kitchen is right here and like the stairs to the basement is right there. And like my house is low-key empty so you could hear everything. And I start hearing little whispers. A little... So I'm sitting there eating my snack and I hear that shit. And I pause the YouTube video I was watching. And I start hearing footsteps come upstairs. So I sat in my backyard for the rest of the night. Up until like 3 a.m. and then I went inside and went to bed.
Story time. So once upon a time in grade five, I was going through this really strange phenomenon where like five of my adult teeth decided to all come in at once. Now I already had this really weird obsession with when I had a loose tooth, I loved to like pluck it out of my face like berries off of a vine. So as you can imagine, sitting there with five loose teeth in my mouth felt like I was in an orchard on a hot summer's day. My brothers had just rewatched The Exorcist with me a few nights before while babysitting. So it's cinematic masterpiece was still ever fresh in my mind as I sat there not listening to my teacher drone on about numbers, secretly popping my teeth out with my tongue and letting my mouth fill with blood. Till I noticed my dear old classmate Tristane, who used to eat rulers and pick on me, was staring at me. So I looked him dead in the eyes, opened my mouth slowly and let all of the teeth and blood just dribble out onto the desk. Then I said in a low grumble, you will die tonight. He started screaming and then I had to go to church. Part two to my homophobic family kicking me out of the house and replacing me with my best friend. So I cannot believe the audacity of my family literally replacing me with Katie. Not only was she just over there for movie night, but they had actually moved her into my room, the room that I was raised in. I felt so much fury that I had to walk around the neighborhood for a while just to calm down. But eventually I just started to walk back to the house that I was staying at. Once I got in, Katie messaged me. She apologized for being such a bad friend, but then she said she had a secret. And she came out to me as bisexual and begged me not to tell my family. She felt like my family was her own and she didn't want to get kicked out. I was so frustrated that she was keeping the same secret that I had in my house, but she's getting to actually stay at my house. It has been a full year now and she is still with them to this day. But thankfully, I'm now living with my boyfriend and his family has accepted me as bisexual. I am honestly so much happier and better off. If you guys have a story that you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. Story time of why it's never good to be in a best friend group of three. So a little background information. I was in fourth grade and I was nine years old, about to turn 10. Now I know you're thinking, that's really young. Well, sis, I was just smart enough to see the red flags early on, unlike half of you who probably didn't see them. Anyway, so I had two friends who are going to call the one Becky and the one Mia. Now let me tell you a little bit about Becky. Becky was kind of a bitch. Now anytime that she saw Mia and I having our own conversation, she would pretty much bully us. And she would have two of her other friends tag along and do it also, Brooklyn and Riley. So the one day we're walking to PE and Mia and I are having a conversation. And in our gym class, you had to line up in groups of three. So it would go Mia, Becky, and then me. Well, because I wanted to finish my conversation with Mia, I decided to sit in Becky's spot. So we're sitting down and then Becky marches over to where we're sitting and just stands there and stares at us. Then she walks away and goes and sits with her other friends. And at the end of gym class, she comes back over to us. Life for part two. Okay, put a finger down, but I'm not going to tell you what it's for until the end. Put a finger down if you are female. Put a finger down if you are broke. You literally have no money. Put a finger down if you're quite a stubborn person. Put a finger down if you have a birthmark or a third nipple. Put a finger down if you live alone. Put a finger down if you are over the age of 18 and you don't have a child. Put a finger down if you're left-handed. Put a finger down if you're dyslexic. Put a finger down if you've ever had an argument in public. If you put one or more fingers down, you would have been burnt at the stake in the 1600s for being a witch. Part 2 of catching my neighbor's mom talking smack about me. So my best friend tells me all these things that my neighbor was saying about me, obviously. And I got really upset, so I went home and I just started to cry. Because for some reason, I felt like when I was younger, every one of my friends' parents hated me. And I never really knew why. I was always the type of person to like let my friends do whatever they want and encourage them in doing whatever they want, whether that's breaking the rules or following the rules. So I mean, I guess that could be something, but I'm just being a supportive friend. Like, <laughs> sorry, I got off topic. So when I told my mom, she was like, okay, come with me, I'm gonna knock on her door. And I was like, heck no, I do not feel like dealing with this. Mom, you deal with it. So she calls her up on the phone, puts her on speakerphone, confronts her about the situation. And this lady starts going on about how she loves me like I'm her own child, saying that I was never a bad influence on her daughter, and that she actually wanted me to hang out with her daughter more. Like, that's not what she was saying at Bagel. This is a story of the time that I caught my neighbor's mom talking smack about me. So I don't know about you guys, but every single Wednesday in my middle school, we would have a bagel sale. And some people's parents would come in to help out. And my neighbor's mom was one of those parents. And I had a best friend at the time whose mom would also work at the bagel sales. But this best friend of mine, her mom never let us hang out with each other because she felt that I was a bad influence on her. When in reality, it was the complete opposite. She was the one that snuck the boys in her house, if you guys remember that story time, where they peed in a flower pot. So basically her mom wouldn't let us hang out. 
And sometimes my friend would go with her mom in the morning, basically as a ride to school, and to help out with the bagels too. And one day when she went in with her mom, my neighbor's mom also was there too. So my friend starts eavesdropping into their conversation, and my friend's mom brings me up and says how much of a bad kid I am and a bad influence. And my neighbor's mom was like, oh wow, that's my neighbor. Like, we always suspected something bad about her. Our whole entire neighborhood knows this about her. Basically making stuff up about me. So then I go home crying, tell my- Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? How would they know? How would they know? I can't. I can't. I just, I can't. Oh my god! It is now October. It's October. Halloween is coming up and I'm holding a challenge for you all. Each week I will create a new look. This is this week's challenge where you guys get to recreate it and all you have to do is simply tag me to be entered in. Each week there will be a winner with a goodie bag and then the final week coming up to Halloween will be the big, big prize. Tag me in all of your Instagram posts. My Instagram is linked down below and also in my bio. Today we have gone with the Joker. So exciting. But yeah guys, a new week is a new challenge and the Joker is this week's challenge. Next Friday the winner will be announced and a new challenge will arrive. I love you all and good luck.